butcher. So it's just gone 11, 11 30, something like that. Been here for a while. Uh, got here, walked around, sat about. Left the kit here. Saw the fish roll. Just off the margin there. Down the slope. About 20 minutes ago. So I popped down there and stood there for about 15 minutes. But um, it's a wide, large area of water out right in front of you there. Although you could probably narrow it down to a few specific areas. But I just felt that if the fish were going to be in here or moving in here or moving in and out of here, this is the bottleneck. And uh, I've got a feeling I'm going to see a lot more fish over my baits here than perhaps Last I would few down weeks. There. Well, last week I could only do a day down here because I had my social for the rest of the week. But um, yeah, that kind of put a, a break on what I was doing. I did spend a couple of weeks on the main lake over there in that big swim near the island. I did all right, didn't I? Second week slowed up, weather changed obviously. But I did notice an awful lot while I was sitting there for those few weeks about where the fish show, uh, the wind direction, now that makes a difference here. So, at the moment we've still got the southwesters that have been blowing pretty much all summer it seems. But we are going to get it veering round to the south, southeast, and tomorrow, or the, uh, I think it's later on today it moves around to the south, southeast, and tomorrow it's going to veer around to the north, northwest, and then northeast. Any easterly, it's going to put fish in this uh, bay. That's a fact, you know, I've seen it. So uh, every time I've seen an easterly push into this bay, the fish push into here as well. So they do follow the wind. It is a noisy swim, of course, but um, that's there, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. I concentrate on the lake more than worry about the noise. So it did take me quite a while to sort of really decide that this is probably going to be a good place to start quite prepared to move as soon as I need to. Um, I've done a lot of fishing on the main lake, not so much in here because I don't think that the fish are in here as much as what they are in the main area of the lake. But I think when they do get in here, I think they're a lot easier to catch. <laughs> so sunny day, clouding over, and a lot of rain later on, a lot of rain, which is why I brought my 60 inch oval JRC block. So I'm not really in a great hurry. Uh, I don't think that there's any point in really hurrying too much. There's not like carp rolling everywhere. But I'm thinking definitely this margin, somewhere up and down the slope, one somewhere over there, I'll find something, and another one over there. Possibly during the day, I might shallow up and put my baits further up the uh, margin, the sloping margin, but later on definitely down on the deck. Right, let's get the kit sorted shall we? Feeding fish, rolled right over the bait, that's the left hand rod, and it started to bubble a bit. That was unexpected. <laughs> oh, so it's getting on for about half 12, 1 o'clock now. Um, I've been messing around loads, trying to find areas. I've had the deeper out, of course. Just basically scanning two or three areas that uh, I want to put a bait in. Having done that, I popped the rigs out, sat back happy. Got a line on the middle rod. Picked it up anyway. Well, the weather's improving. Winds picked up and now moved around to the west. The forecast's got it right so far. Like I say, the wind will be veering southeasterly and then north northeasterly tomorrow, late tomorrow. So I think this is the place to be at the moment. I really do. Possibly next swim down, but um, I stood there for quite some time. You know. There's nobody else on the lake as far as I know. <laughs> Nobody's passed me and said hello anyway. So I think, you know, run at any time really. Um, I'm just using a couple of handfuls of bait. 
I'm on the 18 mils at the moment, it's all I had left in the freezer. I've used up all my 12s and 14s. I am expecting another batch. Um, this time round, Nick's going to um, roll 14 and 12 mil dumbbells for me. And we're going to try those out. So, looking forward to that. They should be coming end of the week. I must get in touch with them as well because I'm running out of uh, 12 mil snail pop ups for the crazy nut as well. I caught a lot of fish on them. Right, happy, everything's sorted. I have been messing around quite a bit. Uh, I just want to get everything as right as possible. So, but we've seen a fish roll over the bait there and a fish roll to the right here, which that right hand rod is on. There's no one up there, so that's cool. Well, I've just had a quick walk up along here. There's a high bank, you can see down at the water, and there's carp moving into this channel. On the other side, about yay far out, about a couple of three rod lengths out, and about two, three foot down maximum. And there's more of them, and there's like groups of two or three, and there's at least two or three groups of them, and they're moving in. And they're definitely moving into this bay. So I think we could get some action today, for sure. It might not be any time soon, but they're certainly moving in. I am very tempted, of course, to put one over there in the shallower water, this middle rod here, to cover any fish that are coming along that margin. And I think I might just do that, just a single. Probably a bright one too. But I had a feeling the fish might move into this bay this week because of the wind direction and a number of other things just you know that's the thing about as previous weeks when I decided that I was going to come down fish for 48 hours fish the island whack a load of bait out boom and just do that but sitting there sitting over there the other week and everything else I've seen just leads me to believe that certain times when this bow switches on you can do really well but I think this channel's always good for a bite, I really do. So, you just gotta put up with the noise, of course. But there's some amazingly big fish in here. And they fight like hell, so, you know. I don't mind putting up with that. I'm gonna put up with it on the river cam. And a lot of other places that I've been to are pretty noisy as well. It's, it's amazing, actually. Carp seem to be drawn to it. <laughs> So yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll move that right hand rod, that, sorry, that middle rod, closer to that willow, further up. See if we can get a bite off of a high vis pop up. I was just about to switch the camera on. In fact, I think I did switch the camera on and the rod went round, so I put the camera down. Look, I've caught myself a bloody pike. <laughs> it was just in the side of the jaw, right there. A little jack of a couple of three pounds. Unbelievable. It's back out again. Would you rain? In about half an hour or so. The sky's not looking too bad. A little bit of dark cloud up there, but not really a lot. But um, I'm going to put up the overbrolly anyway. It's just here. There's loads of room under it as well, which is great. <laughs> yeah, can't see much cloud. Really quite thick and heavy. It doesn't really look like the rain sort of storm clouds, so it might just be drizzle. So, out again, another handful, right where I want it. Well, the rain's here. It's been spitting and spotting for about 20 minutes. Pretty much on time, and there you go. Loads of room. Perfect. I must admit, I do like to sit here and watch that bubble away. Oh yeah. To be honest with you, I was expecting a run by now. Four o'clock's good time. You know, getting late in the day. We've only got three hours of uh, light left. <sighs> you know, <laughs> but I'm staying here for at least an hour or two after dark. We'll see how it goes. Um, you never know. I might switch to 
feeding after dark, they might have switched to feeding middle at night. So I shall have to uh, keep my ear to the ground, of course. Right, there you go. There's a the show. I can see the bubbles coming up as well. So I think I might move that right hand rod onto that area. It is a way out from the edge of the margin though, from where the bottom of the drop-off is. It's more on the flatter bottom area, that is. I'll sit and watch. Okay, so I've moved that right-hand rod. Probably the same fish, but I saw it top just about there. So, right-hand rod came out. I changed the hook bait over to a 14 mil. Crazy enough, pop up. All of them have been changed to that now. And then I put a couple of handfuls straight over there. All pretty quick. No fuss. As soon as the lead hit the water, rods down in the buzzer bars. And I just start firing over the bait straight on it. Easy. Well, the rain's increased, as you can see, but the wind has died a bit. It is pushing from the east though. Um, I'm all ready for fishing about an hour or two after dark. Then it'll be home with the kit, get some grub, clean up, bed, up first thing in the morning, back here, first light, around about seven o'clock, something like that. For another session. I won't be putting any bait in before I go. I'll be doing that in the morning. I put three or four anvils on each spot today. That's enough. You know, I don't think there's a huge amount of fish in here at the moment. But there definitely is fish though. And a fish show over there, one over there, one just up this margin here. So there's a few about. I'm just hoping that they move in. If they do, I could do alright. Hopefully we'll get a little bit of respite in this rain when I'm on the way back to the motor. So it's rush hour, very noisy. Um, I've spotted one fish poking out right at the bottom by the willow there, the overhanging willow. The only one that actually really gets anywhere near the water anymore. <laughs> So also it kettles on. So at the moment, wind is coming again from the southwest, but it is due to swing today to the southeast, and then around to the northeast later in the day. Now, this is probably my last morning, um, simply because I found that fish are feeding for that last couple of three hours of daylight. This time of year, it's not so bad, but of course, as the nights draw in. You've got more and more time fishing in the dark than you have actually fishing in the daylight. But we need to know when the fish are feeding. Um, and so we need to be here at the moment as much as possible. But it is looking like they're switching to afternoons. I'm sure, and I'm hopeful, that we can pick up a fish in the morning. Um, you know, I wouldn't come fishing if I thought I couldn't catch a fish. But I just think that the afternoons and evenings are going to be more productive. And possibly into winter it might even be, you know, two in the morning. Um, if that's the case, you won't see me there again. Coffee's percolating. Absolutely wonderful first coffee. Coffee's made. I'm sorting out all my kit at the moment. Um, I'm carrying too much and uh, I don't want to be bringing this body again. It's too heavy. I don't need it. It's too big. Um, I wear waterproofs. I don't need an umbrella to keep me dry. It's just to keep the kit dry, really. Talking of kit and keeping it dry, I don't know why I bother with this canvas stuff and these, uh, these uh, rod bags. Although, I'll be honest, I've had these rod bags like, I don't know. 15 years now, 10 or 15 years at least, but once they get wet, they absolutely weigh a ton. And this thing, 
Um, this is all, this is only two years old, and it's already perished. You know, look. And it's letting in water. And when this gets full of water, literally, this thing weighs about 15 bloody stone. I nearly left it round behind the bank the other day. <laughs> Chucked it in the bin. I'm getting a new one. That one's being thrown. Two years it lasted me. But it's made of all this stuff. And it's not waterproof, it just holds water and it's no good, you know, it's just we need plastic. It lasts forever. Oh it is too much, it's too much work for me, you know. Considering how short the day is, at this time of year doing you know, dawn at dusk, dawn at dusk, dawn at dusk, every day. It's too much. And like I say, I can't night fish this place because I just can't sleep here. So, it's got to be, you know, narrowed down, hasn't it? Uh, so it's, it'll be lunch times onwards from now on. Lunch time. Into a, a couple of hours into dark. Talking of which, I spent, I bet I probably, I left well, I left here at 9 o'clock, <laughs> so I was here for a good two hours or more after dark. Um, never heard or saw a fish roll, jump, leap or anything, never had a touch. Um, there was fish in here yesterday, there's fish in here no doubt now, but whether they're in sufficient numbers to get me a bite, I don't know. There's plenty of ducks though. Yeah, it's a bit tough at the moment, and the weather's, well, I left here, I mean, any of you that's packed up at night will know how difficult it is sometimes to pack up at night, get all your kits sorted, you know. I had a head torch, but it's never that easy, because you can't really see around you, so you have to be really careful, you, know, you make sure that you look for everything, you pick everything up. But it was absolutely pissing it down with rain, it was chucking it down. By the time I got back to the car, it was so hard, I just decided to park up there for five minutes with the engine running and wait. In fact, I sat there for a good 10 or 15 minutes. I got really worn out on the way back because this thing was just soaking wet, still is. Weighs an absolute ton. It's like, you know, I mean, it's supposed to be lightweight, but you, you literally, it, at the moment, it weighs about 40 or 50 pounds. It's utterly ridiculous. I'm so angry with it. <laughs> really, I'm really pissed off with it. Um, so I've ordered a new one. I've got an Avid one coming. I saw one at the social the other day. It looked all right. Um, expensive for what it is, 50 quid. You know, it's a bit of plastic and foam stitched together. But, you know, um, and if that doesn't do the job and doesn't last long, I'll just get a cheap one. I'll just get one of those cheap 15 quid Chinese jobs. There's not a lot of point in buying, paying out money for kit if it ain't gonna last more than a year, you know? And I've noticed that a lot of the kit that we get nowadays just doesn't seem to last. Shame, really. Windjail buggy this morning. Let's have my coffee. Or well, we've got a bit of a ripple, but it's not much of a wind, is it? It's supposed to be much stronger than this, according to the weather forecast. But we do have local weather around here. Um, so tomorrow, wind. Well, tonight, around about three or four o'clock, the wind is swinging to the north and then the northeast. And tomorrow, it's northwesterly, so I know where I'm going to be. Right at that far end, that bottom corner where that huge wall is that they've built. It's actually, if they're not doing any work over there, it's really quiet. It's probably the quietest swim on the whole lake at the moment. And uh, it gives you access to that area where they hide up a lot of the time, you know. Um, so, I will be punching the spawn out, <laughs> clipping up making sure I get the distances exactly right, measuring it all up, 
Um, but, you know, it's, it's only really around a 60 or 70 yard, 80 yard cast to where I want to hit. So it's not too much of a problem at all. And I prefer to use the little spawn that I've got, which I've got on that rod at the moment. I've got this one here as well, which is, I think, the medium size one. That's more than enough for me. And I can, I can pop this thing uh, 90, 100 yards without too much trouble. That's a four and a half pound test curve rod. Chub, I bought that, ooh, seven, eight years ago from the lads at uh, Cambridge Carp Cabin. Right, coffee, still got half a cup. Second coffee. So there's a decent southwesterly pushing across the lake now. This morning when I got here, there was an easterly pulling up this way. We had a fish top just to the right of where I've got my bait, so there must be something around. <laughs> I'm on this flathead system, which, to be honest with you, I haven't really used here um, yet this year. So, well, at all, you know. I've been on the um, normal leg clip, pendulum style. But I reckon with this fairly firm bottom, a flat leg would work well. But if it doesn't work out well, and I don't get the runs when I think I should, and I think I should have got a run yesterday, to be honest with you. You know, <laughs> if you see a fish rolling over your bait and you don't get a run, it's very disappointing. You know, because it's obviously done you over. Or, Hasn't, hasn't come across your trap, whatever, you know. Um, yeah, the wind doesn't really get up until sort of eight or nine o'clock it seems on this lake. And it, it kind of fades around four or five. And if I'm waiting for a wind late in the day and it fades, there's not a lot of point in waiting for it. But it does have its effect overnight and first thing in the morning. So the wind is picking up now. About a few spots of rain. We're going to get rain around lunchtime and then it's just going to get increasingly harder and harder. So by the time I leave here at about eight, half eight, nine o'clock, um, I'm going to get absolutely soaked. Everything's going to weigh a ton. Um, but hopefully tomorrow I'll be back with my new Avid map because that's supposed to be delivered today. So that's to look forward to. But um, I've got to be honest, I'm not looking forward to the journey back to the car this evening, it's going to be hard with all this kit wet. But there you go, if I catch a fish, I won't care. <laughs> Those fish were moving in here yesterday, I'm sure of it, through that channel. They were at least poking their heads in, so, yeah. Morning. <laughs> well, the road's quiet a tad. This rush hour's over. As you can see, we've got a nice wind on the lake now. Though. This is supposed to swing round to the south and in the southeast. That left hand rod's been moved and I've tossed it right over there onto that far bank slope in about six, seven foot of water. Those fish were coming in over that area yesterday, so that's what I thought I'd do. You've got to try and make something happen. You've got to kind of work out. You can't just, you know, carry on, same old, same old, if you're not getting a result. The unfortunate thing about this place is you're either in here or you're in the main part of the lake. So you can't keep your eye on all of the lake. I really want to keep my eye on that part of the lake as well, but, yeah, I've got to stay with the world, so it's, it's a difficult thing to do. So, you know, I think it's with anywhere new, you know, where you you don't really know the habits of the fish, etc, etc. You just have to keep doing different things and trying different things and watching and eventually you learn, you know. And I think I'm learning. Um, sometimes my hunches about where the fish may be don't prove to be correct. But when you're not seeing them, you know, we will keep trying. We'll keep plugging away. But tomorrow we'll follow that northwesterly straight down at that bottom corner there, for sure. Give that another go. We've had a few blanks in that just recently. Um, not been able to really get it on, you know. Um, but yeah.
But you know, the fact that this place is empty at the moment just goes to show you it's not an easy proposition, it really isn't. And having all that to put up with as well makes it, yeah, difficult. Well, I don't think this sun's going to last for long because there's some fair old rain clouds on their way by the looks of them. Sandwich toast is on. Season tomorrow, toasty for lunch. Early lunch. You know, I'm tempted to just pull the rods in, go and sit on that lake for half an hour and watch. But then, you know, I always like to see a plan through at the end to a conclusion if I can, to a certain degree. And I want to wait for that wind to swing round, and it will do. And I want to see what happens. Um, it's going to be another really wet uh, night, dark, of course, because it's going to be cloudy. Um, so it's going to be difficult uh, packing away and getting the kit back to the car, but it doesn't matter because an hour afterwards I'll be in a nice hot bath. Uh, so, you know, not so bad. Um, gas is on low, but I better keep my eye on it. Don't want to make any rookie mistakes. I've only got two toasties, with, two toasties with me. I should have packed through. There you go. But yeah, we'll put in full effort, see how it turns out, and we'll keep our eye on this area tomorrow as well. Um, but definitely before I go, I'm going to just put a load of bait straight in over there. I've got a couple of spare keys with me, and I want to just stick it straight in and see what happens. That way, if I do pop back in here tomorrow, I've got something. I'm going to stick, split it probably as well with that area there. It might not be a bad idea actually to start introducing a little bit more bait. Um, I want to try and catch them off anvils if I can, but uh, I also need to pull them into the area as well, don't I? So I knew you'd want to see it. Not burned, perfect. Flat calm. <laughs> Weather's changing. That's what's happening. Wind's changing, direction's changing, everything's changing. That's what the flat calm's about. It's moving over us. Well, there you go. You can see the wind is going from left to right now, rather than right to left. the wind change we were waiting for. Hopefully, excuse me, just finishing off my toasty. Hopefully, that'll bring a few more fish in. I might get a bite. <laughs> it's bringing with it a few spots of rain as well. But that's a definite wind change. No carp bay. That's what I feel today. Yesterday when I saw those fish moving into that channel there, I thought, yeah. When I saw the fish rolling here yesterday, there weren't so many, but there was a number, you know, a number of shows. All the indications, you know, and I thought today they'll be in here in numbers, hopefully enough for me to nab one. So far, that hasn't actually proved to be correct. Another two hours, I expect to start seeing shows here, and if I don't see any shows, then yeah, no carp bait. Um, and I think that's what you need to do with this bait. You just need to get time it right, you know. I think uh, after blanking yesterday, that, might, that did make me think about coming in here this morning, I must admit. But, um, yeah, it's difficult at the moment. I'm surprised. October's normally a very good month where they tend to go on the feed a lot of the time. And, um, yeah, you know, so it's the only angle down here yesterday in the morning. One guy's just moved into the swim next door for the night. Um, but it's not packed out by any means, is it? which is a sure sign that it's not fishing that well. 
Last time I looked in the book, yeah. But I think if this carries on this way, you know, I'm going to follow the wind tomorrow. Um, I'm going to strip my kit right down. I think I might be back to two rods because it's just a lot less weight. With two rods, you only need two bank sticks, smaller buzzer bars, obviously two rods, two bar alarms. So a lot of that, you know, is sort of not there. Um, I don't need rod bags, all the rest of it. Just take a couple of rods plus a Yeah, really strip it down because it's, it's, um, it's about three quarters of a kilometre kilometre walk all the way at the other end there from the car park all the way around so it's a fair old walk so you know I don't want to have to be carrying loads of gear. I really only need what I need to catch fish with. Uh, staying dry, I just keep the kit dry under the little umbrella. Waterproofs will do. They don't weigh a lot. You can carry those. Yeah. But we ain't got a lot of work this week. Which is a good and a bad thing. It's good for fishing, bad for everything else, of course. Well, the wind is pushing through that channel now, nicely. 50% of the main lake is now on the back of the wind. So, that northeasterly has definitely arrived. Whether or not the carp respond, I was hoping that there would be more fish in here by now and that this would, like, you know, really switch it on for the last couple of three hours of, of the day. And it's come. I don't know if it will, we'll see. I've just got a toasty on. Uh, one side's done. That just needs a little bit longer. So yeah, we'll be staying here until after dark, well after dark. I shan't be leaving much before nine o'clock. And then tomorrow, I'll get here a bit late. Um, it'll be nice and sunny tomorrow. Uh, Northwesterly hammering down there hopefully. I'll have a look at the wind strength and see what it's like. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have a good look around before I settle in down at the bottom end there. Just, uh, you know, we have got to find them. Really got, I mean, I was trying to be where they might be, but to be honest with you, I think you just need to try and get on top of them. <laughs> and I know where to do that. First Island. Well, I've got to say, it's not much of a wind, but it is in the right direction. And it's been blowing for a good hour now, but it's coming through that channel nicely. And I've got a rod right over the other side there on the drop off, six or seven foot. It's left hand rod. And I'm thinking if they do move in here, it'll be that left hand rod that probably goes first. But it's a big F, isn't it? This is a difficult thing about fishing when it goes like this. It can be difficult just to sort of stay interested, sort of stay alert, keep active, um, you know, just keep it interesting, keep it fun. But, you know, a lot of the fishing we do is like this, isn't it? It's trial and error, you know. Um, sometimes you learn things quickly, situations present themselves like the other week there over there, you know, seeing them fish, and um, boom, you know, other times it's a bit like this. The thing is to try not to go around chasing my tail too much, you know. Some of the things I've done have worked really well. That first week over the island there, conditions were perfect, got everything right. Six runs, five fish landed, including that 30, and that big old 28. So, you know, it does work now and again. You, you don't get results like that, I think, unless you kind of, you know, go with your gut, try something, do something, you know, but, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now, you know. Um, I don't want to just come here, turn up at the first island, and chuck out. I want to see where else I can catch up if I can, and when, obviously, under what, what conditions. So I think at the moment conditions are better here than they have been for the last two days, even though at the moment I'm not seeing any evidence of fish. Um, but you know, that wind is coming through nicely. 
and I should think half the main lake, like I say, would be back of the wind. Well, it's definitely looking better in here, isn't it? If I was to turn up now, I'd be putting myself in this swim, so, yeah. Been a long old day, and not a lot going on, but it's definitely worth being here for now. So, mornings, scratch them. It's going to have to be afternoons, evenings, for sure. And I think travelling as light as possible as well. Spending as much time as we can just looking for the fish and then moving on to them as much as we can. But yeah, definitely looking better in here. Well worth doing the evening here. By tomorrow morning, the wind will have switched round and it'll be going in the other direction from the north. That could be good too. It's really looking good, isn't it? Still ain't seen a fish roll or anything, but you know. Look at those trees waving. That's what you want. Unfortunately, this wind is going to change tomorrow. I wish it'd stay. Otherwise, be back in this swim again. It's really pushing, isn't it? If you're going to fish this bay, and I guess this is what you want to see, isn't it? Look at it, lovely. I haven't seen a single fish show itself yet, though. I'm sure one or two must have popped their heads out. I probably missed them, but... Yeah, a bit surprised. I guess we've got another hour or two of light left, if we're lucky, maybe an hour, hour and a half. But like I say, I'll be staying for a good hour or more after dark. So I've got all the kit stashed, because uh, I don't want to be packing up in the rain and all that. Just seen a fish, top. Right in the channel there. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me with this wind belting in like this, you know? So I can stand under the tree and keep dry for the next hour or two, but I'm staying, I'm not going anywhere. I've been waiting for this for the last 24 hours, haven't I really? So I'm gonna be here for it. I might stay late, I might stay until 9, 10, 11 o'clock, you don't know. I'm getting runs, if, if I can hear fish, and see fish rolling, I'm staying. You know, normally when it gets dark, about an hour or so after dark, it tends to go pretty quiet. Um, but even so, I like to stay. But I think if I haven't had a run by then, you know, 